Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to Essex Church, where this gathered community of Kensington Unitarians has its spiritual home. Welcome to those of you joining us on Zoom this morning from your homes or your workplaces. It's great that you can be with us. And welcome to those of us here in person this morning. For those of you I've not met before, I'm Sarah Tinker. I used to be the minister of this congregation a long, long time ago. And it's lovely to come back and see you from time to time. So our service title today is Times of Change. And as always, I'm exploring a topic that feels relevant in my own life, close to my own heart, as they say. And I wonder if change, or maybe the lack of it, has some relevance for you too. You might have recognised our um, opening music as Bob Dylan's old classic, The Times They Are a Changing. So let's explore together today what is changing, what is timeless, what we'd like to change, and what changes we resist. But let's first bring ourselves fully to this time and place, the here and the now of our being. You might want to take a conscious breath, a breath in and out that allows us to settle for this hour that we've chosen to spend together. And as we breathe out, we can let go for a while at least of, of some niggles, be they of the mind or the body. Let's appreciate a feeling of presence in this time and space. And aware of our own selves, well, let's expand our awareness to those we connect with. Be they here in person or digitally through a screen or through sound. And our opening words by Leslie Takahashi remind us that we are connected. Despite distance and sometimes fear, we are connected. Despite loneliness and change, we are connected. Across different experiences and lives, we are connected. Even in the face of life's inevitable losses, we are connected. When we wish to laugh, we are connected. When we need to mourn, we are connected. Across a world divided, we are connected. And even when we dance alone in a room, we are connected. In the heat of the sun, we are connected. In the glow of the stars, we are connected. Across the limits of our imagination, we are connected. Even when nature trembles, we are connected. And our chalice flame is lit. It's another symbol of connection. It's aligning us with Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist communities the world over, bringing a progressive religious light to our world. It's a light of acceptance. It's a light of encouragement. It's a light that brings warmth, shining on us all this day. And our first hymn this morning is a cheerful one. It's number 33 in the Purple Hymn Book. It's called Enter, Rejoice and Come In. And it has the line, today will be a joyful day. And I always feel the need to say that we're all aware that life will not be particularly joyful for everybody at present. And if that describes your situation, then do let someone know if you would like to. And maybe a little spark of lightness and brightness can help to lighten burdens, despite everything. For those of you online, the words are going to appear on your screens. So do feel free to sit, stand, sing, or simply listen Enter, rejoice, and come in.
a, a reading uh, now, which is called Thresholds. And thresholds are, I think, a, a kind of key feature of this whole issue of change in our lives, because change often requires, whether it's enforced or chosen, it requires a stepping forward, stepping over in some way. Let's see if this relates to us. Thresholds by Arlen Goff. Thresholds, we, we cross them every day from room to room, from outside to inside and back again, from here to there, from anywhere to everywhere, from age to age. Each threshold offers an opportunity for change, for renewal, for transformation, from what we were and what we are to what we can be. In this hour and in this place, we cross a threshold from our day-to-day, -day everydayness into space and time attuned to the other, to the sacred, to the holy, into an awareness of new life pregnant with possibilities. How will we be renewed in this moment? How will we be changed by this hour? How will we be transformed through this gathering of beloved community? Come, longing, thirsty souls, come, let us worship together. And I, I invite us all to join in a time of prayer and reflection now, reflecting upon life's changes and transitions. Let's ready ourselves in whatever way align ourselves with that which we hold to be greater than ourselves. So may the divine spirit of life and love be with us now in this our time of worship and bless our togetherness. May our hearts be softened and our busy minds be stilled. May our bodies be at peace as best they can within themselves as we turn our thoughts to our world community. Throughout history, the story of our planet has been a story of change, a great unrolling narrative with multitudinous characters and settings. To be alive is to move and to move is to change. Let us remember our tiny, yet significant part in that great drama of life on earth. May our thought and care be with places in our world where changes are enforced and bitter, where life is tough and there can be little illusion of control for the people who live there. Let's think, too, of the many places where change is held back, repressed, where, where the search for freedom is seen as rebellion, where free speech is denied. The places where people do not dare sometimes even to be themselves. May all such places be touched by love and understanding. May fear diminish. May peace expand. And let us think with loving compassion of those we know who are facing life's difficulties. Those perhaps who face changes not of their choosing. Those who seem stuck and unable to change. Those who yearn for life to be different. And in our own hearts, may we also be filled with love so that we are better able to accept the changes in our own lives, challenging and painful, though some of them are. In the midst of our transitions, may we be granted all the strength that we need. 
And may that strength be something that we pass on to others who we meet along the way. For surely it is in our common humanity and in the sharing of our paths in life that we find meaning and purpose to sustain us and guide us, now and always. Amen. We're going to be singing another um, hymn today. It's a, number 142 in the Purple Hymn Book, and words will also a, appear on your screen. And um, these words are written by Roger Mason, uh, who is connected with both our Golders Green and our Roslyn Hill congregations. Roger is famous as a geologist and he worked for years in Chinese universities where he became acquainted with Taoist philosophies. So these are expressed in this hymn, the idea of the way, an energetic flow through all that exists. And that's why our order of service today has this um, black and white image, which you can read long essays about the symbolism of this particular Taoist image. But it's containing a oh, wrong way. <laughs> it's containing um, a sense of dualities forever in movement and in transition, each containing a seed of potential of the opposite within itself. I think if we could deal with world affairs with that in mind, it could help us. So I hope you like this hymn, Shining Through the Universe. This reading is taken from Alan Watt's book entitled The Wisdom of Insecurity, a message for an age of uncertainty. Alan Watts was a highly regarded writer on philosophy and psychology of religion and is one of the key figures who brought the wisdom of Zen Buddhism to the Western minds. And this is what he writes. Perhaps the most exasperating thing about nature and the universe, about you and me, is that it will, is that it will never stay put. Yet the perishability and changefulness is part and parcel of its liveliness and loveliness. This is why poets are so often at their best when speaking of change, of transitoriness of human life. For poets have seen the truth that life change, yeah, sorry, um, that life change 
movement and rhythm are all the essence of all things lovable. In sculpture, architecture and painting, the finished form stands still, but even so, the eye finds pleasure in the form only when it contains a certain lack of symmetry. When frozen in stone, as it may be, it looks as if it were in the midst of motion. Is it not a strange inconsistency and an unnatural paradox that I resists change in me and in the surrounding universe? For change is not merely a force of destruction. Every form is really a pattern of movement and every living thing is like the river, which if it did not flow out, would never have the been able to flow in. It was a difficult reading, I hope you got it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Juliet. And yes, I think we could study that reading for the uh, next year. <laughs> but we're moving into a meditative time of our service now. There's going to be um, some words to lead us into three minutes of shared silence together. And then that comes to an end with a chime from our bell. And then we're going to have a fine piece of music from Massenet's opera, Thais, appropriately called Meditation. So let's get ourselves as comfy as we can for these next few minutes. Make those adjustments that help you turn inwards. Some people like to slightly straighten their backs, maybe give those shoulders a gentle wiggle, rolling them up and back and down, whatever works best for you. Maybe take one of those soothing breaths deep into the belly. And as we release that breath, we might have a sense of tension being also released. Maybe close your eyes or soften your gaze. Perhaps focus on something that pleases you. A candle flame, a favorite place in your room, a shaft of light coming through a window. And if you want to, the invitation in these quiet minutes is to reflect on changes in your own lives. And I'll take us through a few suggestions now. We might think of changes that have brought us happiness in life. Choices we made, perhaps at moments of serendipity when some alteration came about and it felt so right, a clear way forward flowed before us. We might think of changes that prove difficult where, where struggle and effort were an inevitable part of the birth pangs of a, a new way of being in life. Most of us, if we choose to, will no doubt be able to think of changes that were a great shock, were unwanted, forced in some way by externals of which over which we had no control. And we might think of the inevitability of change in human lives, even when we may yearn for stability and continuation. So as we enter the fellowship of stillness and silence together now, let us consider change.
So times of change. We've all been around the block a year or two, haven't we, really? And that makes us all experts on the topic of change, I'd say. Um, they do say that nobody actually likes change except for a wet baby. But I don't know about you, but for me, it's, it's more complicated than that. Change is actually fine with me, so long as I've chosen it. It's the changes that I haven't chosen and that life seemingly thrusts upon me. Those are the changes that I don't like and which given half the chance I shall resist. I've been um, reading around this topic of change these last few weeks. I found a perfect story um, of Nasruddin, the Sufi wise and holy fool. And the story explains that Nasruddin once went to hear a preacher in the house of prayer, just like this. And the preacher was shouting, just like we shout at you week after week, addressing the congregation with a fierce and angry look, saying, humans are ungrateful creatures. Nothing will ever satisfy their desire. When God gives them winter, they complain they're too cold. When God brings them summer, people complain about the heat. And Nasruddin raised his hand and interrupted the preacher, saying, well, nobody complains when it's spring. And that's the truth, isn't it? We, we like the changes that we like. And most of us really like this season of spring, particularly at the moment here in London. It is glorious, I would say. Wisteria time. Now, as I, I look around the congregation here at Essex Church today, I know how many people have had changes thrust upon them recently. In fact, I'd be surprised if there was a single person here today who hasn't faced some change in the last 12 months. Some of them joyous, some of them scary, some of them seemingly now completed, some changes still very much in transition, in progress, unfinished, incomplete. And of course, incompletion, poof, well, that's the stuff of life, isn't it? As soon as we're born, we're on this journey through life, a journey that rolls and unfolds before us, a journey with unexpected twists and turns, a journey where we get to make some choices, where we exercise our free will, a journey in which we are, for some of the time at least, somewhat conscious and aware. We humans have this ability, don't we, to reflect on our existences. And I really think that is what gives life its richness and its poignancy. We are aware of time passing. We watch ourselves change and grow both physically and emotionally. We're born, we die, and we know it. And these changes in our own little lives, well, they're mirrored by the universe itself with its myriad processes, all working to their own time scales, spinning planets, burning suns, mysterious black holes, leaves on trees, wisteria blooming, birds hatching, each with its own path to follow, its own sequences of change, its own time scale. Nothing staying the same, be it at the planetary level or at the microscopic. I found this great quote from G.K. Chesterton, and he wrote, all conservatism, that's with a small c, all conservatism is based upon the idea that if you leave things alone, you leave them as they are. But you do not, not even cracks in Harold's ceiling. If you leave a thing alone, you leave it to a torrent of change. And a torrent of change is what we are existing in. Again, a long, long time ago, Alvin Toffler wrote a book about this where he defined the term future shock. He defined future shock as the shattering stress and disorientation that we induce in individuals by subjecting them to too much change in too short a time. And the dizzying disorientation brought on by the premature arrival of the future 
That's a sentence to chew over for the rest of the day, isn't it? The dizzying disorientation brought on by the premature arrival of the future. I mean, if you tried to buy a piece of electrical equipment recently, it, it's television perhaps or something to play music on. Well, in the olden days, it used to involve just about four choices, you know, the size of screen and da da da. I was standing in the midst of John Lewis's electrical department recently, and it, it dawned on me that we are indeed at the start of a truly new age. This is the era of home entertainment in which every aspect has been made as complex and as varied as possible, and with many wires to be plugged in to join all the different bits together. TVs, sound systems, they're just one tiny example of the complexity of our lives today. And as Alvin Toffler predicted when he wrote his book, Future Shock, or 30 years or more ago now, the effect on us human beings facing too much change too quickly is shock. And shock has to be worked through, processed, if you like. Even if it's a little thing like a change of TV, or a far more profound change in our personal lives. Now, the need to work through change has always been known. There's um, many years ago now, I remember studying the work of an anthropologist, Van Gennep, who coined the term rites of passage to describe ceremonies that tribal people use to mark a person's transitions through life, birth, coming of age, marriage, death. Van Gennep studied many pre-industrial societies and he identified these three key elements in any rite of passage. There's the acknowledgement of an ending, which needs marking in ritual, perhaps by grieving or, or through some symbolic letting go. Then the person undergoing the ritual is, is regarded as in the middle phase, the second phase, a time of transition. They are about to cross over a threshold to leave the past beyond, behind, and to step out into the unknown future. This is sometimes described as a liminal state, that border between what is conscious and unconscious, known and unknown. It's something sometimes like trying to reorient yourself when you're in a fog. This is the uncertainty that Alan Watts was describing in the reading that Juliet gave us earlier, uncertainty that can contain great learning if we take time to consider it. The liminal phase is a rich opportunity for self-reflection and for new learning. And that liminal phase eventually leads onto the stage of transition itself in which change is made and a new situation is recognized and marked. If you think of, say, the rites of passage involving a child, a young person's acceptance into an adult group, well, that middle phase, that liminal phase, often involved testing and hardship in some time, and only when the tests have been completed can transition to adult status be properly marked. And as I've been thinking about changes and transitions all this week, one realisation stood out for me that I think as a society currently, we often um, lack ways, clear ways to mark our transitions. I mean, some of us watched the coronation last week. Now they know how to do it, marking a move from the old to the new. And I do think that in our own lives, the transitions that are particularly not always noted are the private ones. You know, those quiet letting goes, the coming to terms with, and the sometimes shocking alterations that are part of most lives, I really think these inner changes need marking and honouring. So here are just a few closing thoughts to take away and consider about this complex issue of change, and a reminder that if in the unlikely event that not all of this has sunk in immediately, you can read these scripts again and again forevermore on the internet on our website. So here are just a few thoughts about this complex issue. So change is inevitable. It's also discombobulating. We really need to help one another adapt, especially when the changes are not of our choosing. And most changes are not of our choosing. 
It's an illusion of our modern way of life that imagines we humans are in charge of our existences. Ha, ha, ha. Of course, our will is a, a factor, but it is only one factor in the midst of a complex and truly chaotic world. Then even unwanted changes may contain gifts for us if we take time to look more deeply. Transformation can sometimes bring us new possibilities and insights. It's worthwhile to look for that glint of gold amidst the mud that is churned up in a time of change. As Alan Goff wrote in that uh, poem we heard earlier called Thresholds, each threshold offers an opportunity for change, for renewal, for transformation from what we were and what we are to what we can be. And I think that the more we can learn to sense that Taoist principle of the way and to allow changes to flow through us, the stronger our powers of discernment become. Our ability to discern what part we might play in the great interconnected process of life in which we are just one minuscule and oh so finite element, but still, still with a vital and unique part to play. Amen. So we get to sing again now. It, our closing song is a blessing. It's found as number 102 in our hymn books. It's from the Irish tradition, May the Road Rise With You. And I forgot to mention, Peter, it's so short. Shall we play it twice? We'll sing it twice. And we'll, let's sing it as a blessing for one another, for all of us traveling the road of life together in company with one another. May the wind indeed be at your back. So announcements, um, big, big thanks to our musicians today, uh, Peter Crockford on piano and Jess Scott on flute. That was beautiful. Very soothing music. Thank you. And thanks to our technical team, Ramona here in church and Janine, a Zoom host. We couldn't run these hybrid services without you. Thank you to the people who are making the drinks and who are stewarding today. Really appreciated. Let me say how delighted I am that Jane Blackhall is confirmed as the new minister for this congregation. Do come along to next Sunday's service, which will be led by Jane and by members of the congregation on a theme of ways of belonging. And that's going to be followed by the congregation's AGM. Always a highlight of the church year, I feel. So do come and be part of that. And there are some other notices on the back of your order of service sheet. I seem to have now mislaid mine, but um, have a look and see what's there. There are a few places for heart and soul in the week ahead. So do get in touch if you'd like to join that. So let's have our closing blessing and then that will be followed. Oh, Heidi, you're you. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I,
if I may, to draw your attention to a forthcoming exhibition. And it is uh, my paintings and sculpture. Then Roy Clark, who is a member of this congregation, uh, many of, him, of you know him. And he's a photographer, and he has now invented some uh, interesting post-photographic um, devices. And then we've invited a third person, Anissa Hassan, who is a very talented young woman from Somalia, and she is a photographer. And the exhibition is being held at Islington Central Library, mm -hmm. which is not far from Highbury in Islington. Mm -hmm. And there is a preview on Tuesday, the 23rd of May in the evening. And then the exhibition is open uh, all week. And then there is a coffee morning on a Saturday, the 27th. So I've got these leaflets here that give you uh, all the information. Oh, oh hi, you uh, great. Uh, lovely. Yeah, go to the preview. There's always very good refreshments. <laughs> so yes, we're going to um, have a closing blessing that will be followed by music again from a French opera, this time by, De by Delib. Uh, we'll be hearing this flower duet as an instrumental piece, but the original song is sung by two young women gathering flowers by a riverbank. And it has the words, let us gently glide together. Let us drift along this sacred stream, surely a perfect description of life. But first, some words from Gary Kowalski to end our time together today. Go in peace. Speak the truth. Give thanks each day. Respect the earth and her creatures for they are alive like you. Care for your body, it is a wondrous gift. Live simply, be of service. Be guided by your faith and not your fear. Face life's changes with good heart. Go lightly on your path. Walk in a sacred manner. Amen. Go well, all of you, and blessed be. Thank you.